You know, darling, I too found a little something extra when I got home. Oh? This. It was under the sofa cushions. Oh, you must have dropped it, huh? <laughs> Not my shade. I wouldn't be caught dead wearing heavenly puce. And while we're on the subject of recreation, you weren't sick at all when I came home, were you? Well, I, I Your was... friend, that dreadful little man, was covering for you, wasn't he? Covering up your revels in the penthouse? Do you know, he dragged me, literally dragged me, from bar to bar, pouring liquor into me until I was so dr Intoxicated. That I passed out. <laughs> Most awful moment in my life was waking up in that revolting little pigsty he calls home. I haven't been so humiliated since... Well, never mind. Well, I'll never forgive you, darling. Never. I figured that, Buffy. That's why I came here to say goodbye. Goodbye? How dare you say goodbye to me? <laughs> That's a privilege I reserve for myself. Big pardon, Mrs. Ruby, the young lady to see you. I beg your pardon. Miss Nora Fulton, she says you're expecting her. Your butler didn't hear me correctly. I said you were not expecting me. Uh, perhaps you'd care to I'm explain. sorry to intrude like this, but I'm very concerned about my employer, Mrs. Raven Whitney. <coughs> Mrs. Raven Whitney. Well, I've heard the name, of course, but I'm afraid I don't know the lady. Nor you, for that matter. I'm her confidential secretary. How nice for you. Well, may I ask, confidentially, what makes you think that I would be able to help you in any way? Perhaps you can't. Well, well. You see, Mrs. Whitney has been gone for two days now. We haven't heard a word of her whereabouts. And you thought that you'd find her here? Only because I found this among her personal papers. It was in her address book, as a matter of fact. And that, I suppose, has my name on it? It doesn't have a name at all, just an address. The Monticello Arms Penthouse. This is the Monticello Arms Penthouse, isn't it? Look, I think you're making a biggest... Quiet, big Johnny. The lady is speaking to me. Miss Fulton, isn't it? Uh, would you, by any chance, happen to know the brand of lipstick that Mrs. Whitney uses? Lipstick? This one, for example. Yes, I believe that's hers. You may speak now, Johnny. Be nice. And tell the poor lady where she can find her employer. Me? Now? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know. experience in these things. Well, I haven't. All you can do, honey, is wait it out. There's only two people who even know I'm in here, that stupid lawyer of mine, and Lance Halliday. Why he did this to me, I'll never understand. What'd he do? He lied. He said I murdered someone and I didn't. It was just an accident. You see, honey, that's what you get for trusting a man. Believe me, I know. It's so what happened to me. I picked up this guy. He turns out to be a cop. A cop! Can you believe it? <sighs> Seemed like a nice guy, too. Well, anyway, looks like you and me, honey, are in the same boat. Well, if they believe him, they'll never let me out of this jail. And that means that I'm gonna be indicted for murder.
talking about? How are you and your brother going to turn this thing into a cash I'm deal? I'm telling you, Jim, he's got it all figured out. Well, you haven't got Raven Whitney figured out. You know what I've heard about her? She's a wild woman. And you know what she's really good at? Revenge. And she's going to get you. Jim, she's not going to get us. All we have to do is threaten her with the front page of the Monticello Star. Oh, great. Now you just added blackmail to your list. <laughs> Jim, look, I am not twisting your arm to take part. I'm inviting you as a friend. Now, this business with getting the theater back, it's out. It's not going to work. You know that. Sure, it was good for a laugh, but frankly, I'd rather laugh all the way to the bank. How about you? What about all those people that came along for the ride that tried to get our theater back? Hey, don't worry about them. Calvin and Cliff are already out of the picture. How come? Calvin was a chicken. Or shall we say soft-hearted like you. And Smiley didn't trust Cliff to keep the face, so he got him out of the courtroom with an alleged phone call from Mike Carr. What about Johnny and Mitzi? Oh, they're too dumb not to go along. I can't believe you. Just count me out of this. What's this white horse you're riding? All of a sudden, this little halo you're wearing looks kind of cockeyed to me. You, of all people, objecting to a little fun and games. What are you talking about? What you didn't object before when a little deception popped into your curly head? Valerie Bryson, ring a bell? I'm warning you. Don't ever bring that up again. Okay, okay. But you can't wimp out on us now, Jim. We need you. With Cliff out of the picture, we need a new lawyer for Raven. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Okay. That's what you want. Oh, but there is something you will do, Jim. You will keep your mouth shut. song children <laughs> no oh well i liked it what didn't you like about it but we want rock and roll oh i yeah. see well my goodness don't tell me that you think a song has to be rock and roll to be interesting we want rock and roll we want rock and roll wait, 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 wait. i have an idea why don't we end this playroom hour with a poem does anybody know a poem I do. Oh, Claude, that's wonderful. Why don't you just come right up here and recite it for us? Oh, watch the balloons. <laughs> the boy stood on the burning deck. His feet were full of blisters. The flames came up and burned his pants. And now he wears his sister. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Uh, where did you learn that version? Hey, cut. <laughs> I was very, very nice, right. Miss Riley. Very okay. nice. Oh, hi. It's nice to see you. Listen, do you have time to talk? I know I'm probably interrupting. Yeah, sure, no problem at all. I'm just finishing auditioning hostesses for the new kids show that I'm doing. Been auditioning them all week with some disastrous results, as you can see. Excuse me for a second, okay? Miss Riley. I am sorry. My harp was out of tune, and uh -huh. I guess I should have brought a rock and roll song or maybe a song about monsters. I mean, it is like being in an arena with a bunch of hungry lions. Well, sure, Miss Riley, you did a fine job. It's a very difficult thing to audition for. I thank you for coming down, and I'll be contacting contacting people next week, okay? Where's the nearest bar? Shh. Across the street. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Harry, would you do me a favor and be sure each one of the lovely children gets back to the right mother? They're waiting for them in the reception area. Thank you very much. Thank you, kids. Bye. 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 Enjoy it. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah, have a seat. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm really delighted that you came to see me at the studio, but I'm kind of, uh, kind of curious as to why. Kelly, you're not going to believe this, but I, uh, saw the ghost of Skylar Whitney last night. <laughs> okay, come on, what's the joke? Kelly, it's not a joke. Remember the man in the picture who looked so much like Sky Whitney? Yeah. He showed up at my apartment last night claiming that he was Sky Whitney. And this guy isn't just a look-alike. He's the exact living replica. I mean, his voice, his face, his mannerisms, everything. It's really uncanny. Wait a minute. Are, are you claiming that Whitney has a twin? I don't know. I mean, that's the only explanation I can think of. 
And uh, Libby Webster and this man, yes, you uh, think... Yes, I'm sorry. That's what I meant to tell you. I know that this man knows Libby Webster. But that's all I know. And Kelly, listen, you can't say anything to anyone. I mean, I sort of told him that I wouldn't mention it to anyone. But, but this twin claims to be Sky Whitney. Yes, he does. And he could get away with it if we didn't know better. Well... It's true. Not very many people knew much about Whitney when he first came to Monticello, so he could have a twin brother. Oh, well, it's possible, but it's not probable. However, Gordon Whitney was Sky Whitney's uncle, right? Right. So Geraldine Whitney Saxon would know for sure. Has Geraldine uh, seen this guy yet? I don't think so, but I have a feeling that he's going to try to contact her. Yeah, but why did he contact you? <sighs> Kelly, he claims that the Whitney fortune is his. That the man that we knew as Sky Whitney, who just died, was an imposter. He expects me to help him prove that that's true. Spencer's on his way out. We're going to have another conference, are we? I'm tired of talking, Libby. What I want now is some action. We're going to settle this thing once and for all this time. Once and for all. You may have jeopardized all our efforts permanently by going to see Valerie Bryson and Mrs. Geraldine Saxon. Just the shock of your face may blow this whole thing wide open. You don't expect they'll keep quiet, do you? Quiet? Quiet? I've had enough quiet. For three years, I had almost nothing but quiet. What I want now is my money. What will that achieve if no one believes you? If you don't approve of my methods, Libby, you can just pull out of this whole thing. How dare you say a thing like that to me? You wouldn't have gotten this far if it hadn't been for Spencer and me. We've worked too hard on your behalf for you to drop us just like that. You know, I'm not a fool, Libby. The idea has occurred to me that the reason that you and Spencer have stuck to me like glue is out of greed. You stand to gain quite a bit when I get back my inheritance. Now, wait a minute. rotten sky. Is that what you really believe of me? Doesn't all the love, loving care I've lavished on you mean anything? I'd be nurse, companion, servant, not to mention confidant to it's you. It's known as protecting one's investment, isn't it? Damn you, I've killed a man for you, you ungrateful swine. Is that true? If you sit down, I'll try to explain to you what happened. When Skyler was... When your double was in Switzerland with his wife, Libby kept an eye on them. Because of certain events that had taken place here in Monticello before their left, I had reason to believe that Raven Whitney was in mortal danger from her husband. So I sent a warning to Libby. She started her surveillance, an armed surveillance. One day while she was following them on a ski slope, Libby realized that he was about to kill Mrs. Whitney. He's going to kill his wife? My God, what kind of a man was he? So what happened? Well, they'd skied to a pretty remote area. She'd taken a bad fall on the slope. She was just lying there. I saw him pick her up. And then I realized she must be unconscious because he took her towards the edge of a precipice. It was obvious that he was going to throw her over the edge. There wasn't much time to think. That's when I shot him. Good Lord. Libby did the right thing. She saved Raven Whitney's life. What she did wrong was not calling the police. What she did was, she killed the man who stole my name and my fortune. At least you can be grateful to me for something. Now all you have to deal with is his widow. Your concern for your employer is very commendable, Miss Fulton. Thank you. It's all very disturbing if I could only be sure that she's all right. What do you think, Johnny? Do you think Mrs. Whitney is all right? Oh, sure. I mean, let's hope so. Well, I'm afraid we haven't been able to be very much help to you, Miss Fulton. However, you have been a great help to me. Oh? <laughs> Never mind. Well, thank you for your time. 
I'm sure that you'll let me know if you hear anything, won't you? Well, answer the lady, Johnny. Good night, then. Good night, my dear. Oh, dear Johnny, you are as transparent as glass. It is written all over you. But you said you never heard of Raven Whitney. I lied. I know. However, don't let that worry you. They say that confession is good for the soul. And here's your chance to do your soul a favor. Well, actually, she was only here for a few minutes. She, uh, she came for tea. No, don't be silly. You can't drink tea from a horizontal position. Oh, it's true. I, I was down in the bar minding my own business when this woman accosted me. Accosted? All right, approached. She started a normal conversation, but all of a sudden she put on this ritzy act, talking about money and her fortune. She was obsessed with money. And I might add, it was in very poor taste. Mm -hmm. So I decided to show off a little bit myself, so I brought her up to the penthouse and showed her around for a few minutes. Show off? Well, I might say she was very impressed. And that is all there is. Well, that's very interesting. Gregory? Madam? I assume that you were here when the lady came to visit. Oh, indeed. And? Well, it was much as Mr. Gentry has described it. The young lady, the young lady came to tea. It was the Chinese jasmine with the little cucumber sandwich. Oh, my favorite. Indeed. Well, did you stay long? Oh, I should say less than half an hour. And were I to comment on the tone of the visit, it, it was all quite casual. Well, then that's all right then, isn't it? See, Buffy, I told you so. Yes. I know. <laughs> well, I... I'm going to change for dinner. I'll see you later. Sure. I want to go get a paper. Well, thanks, pal, for saving my life. Always glad to be of service, huh? boyfriend? Well, it sounds to me like he was sick and tired of this girlfriend of his, you know, had it up to his eyeballs. And he was going to get rid of her. And he figured that this was the way to get rid of her so he wouldn't have to take the blame for it. In other words, that little weasel planned the entire caper. But nobody would do that. He wouldn't. Honey, Men are capable of anything. Maybe he planned to have Jinx see us at the restaurant. He knew she would go into a jealous rage and come to his penthouse gunning for him. Yeah, that's just what I said. Anyway, what you've got to learn is that men are rats. And you happen to fall for a great big rat. Well, if they believe him, that means I go to prison for life. Go! Hey, hey, what the hell is going on in here? Quiet down or I'm going to put you in the psycho ward. I'm already in one. I want out of here. You're not going anywhere, lady. I know my rights and I want to make a phone call to Mike Carr. Listen, honey, you quiet down or I'm going to come in there and shut you up good. I want to make a phone call. I'm telling you, lady, if you keep up this racket, you're gonna be sorry. You're the one who's gonna be sorry because I happen to know some very influential people in this town, like the district attorney, Mike Carr, and the chief of police, and I'm gonna have your head on a silver platter! Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time. Either you shut up, or I'm gonna come in there and do it for you. Hey! Watch your mouth, gerbil bread! Hey, you shut up, too! Oh, you 
scaring me, bird lips. Yeah. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Hey, don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay. What the hell's all the commotion? Oh, some histrionics from Raven Whitney. Boy, she got a pair of lungs. She wants to talk to the DA now. Oh, we gotta tell Smiley. Where is he? Maybe he's in the booking room. Let's go see. Smiley. Hiya, fellas. My, you gentlemen are thorough. The last entry here was Mrs. Raven Whitney.